Today I wanted to take you through a basic build log that shows how to convert your DJI NASA F450 frame to a Team Black Sheet Discovery. The TBS Discovery frame is actually a really great frame if you want to uh, take the next step in your FPV setup. So this video will cover the different components uh, as part of the build and the different parts that come with the kit. So if you look at the layout here, we have a bottom frame where we're gonna solder all our uh, ESCs, battery connections, and this is the top frame where we're gonna solder some headers and be able to connect the two. The TBS Discovery Kit runs about 99 bucks and it took from the date of my order to uh, delivery about 10 days, so not, not too long. And with the kit you get uh, both the top and bottom plate, spacers between your plates, a bunch of different screw sets for your, mounting your motors and your spacers, a mount for your FPV camera. Now in my case, I'm using the uh, HD um, Hero 2, the GoPro Hero 2 for uh, both the FPV and aerial video setup. One thing we won't cover in this build is if you see this mounting area, it's actually for the TBS core which, uh, which is a nice component power supply for your um, FPV setup and uh, in some cases I believe there's an optional OSD, an on-screen display that comes with it. That runs about uh, I think the core runs about $79. Before we get started with the build, I wanted to just uh, talk about a few of the additional components aside from the frame. So of course, we have the NASA that we'll pull out and put in the TBS Discovery, a Turnigy 9X uh, receiver, the NASA VU, the versatile unit, four 950KV um, motors, actually iPower motors, these are great. Uh, DJI uh, motor replacements. Of course our battery uh, 2.45 amp, a LiPo, 3S LiPo, then our um, video transmitter. This is a Hobby King setup. It's a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. Of course the GoPro Hero and last but not least our uh, 30 amp ESC's. Okay, as you can see, we have our four ESCs soldered with positive on the right and negative on the left. And next we'll go ahead and we'll be soldering our battery connector where positive is on the top of the frame and then negative, as you can see here, is on the bottom. Now we have our battery connector in place, soldered positive on top, negative on bottom. So now we're going to solder the header pins that connect to the receiver and get those in place and notice that this is the top of the frame and the header pins are facing upwards because uh, when we get to the mounting the receiver it'll mount right here on top and then we'll run our servo leads into the the header pins that we're about to solder. Okay now we have our receiver pins in place now we're gonna on the bottom of the top plate we're going to solder this set of header pins and these are what uh, each one of these leads will connect to a channel in the DJI NASA. Okay, now we have the uh, NASA flight controller pins in place soldered on the top. For this step I'll go ahead and mount the NASA to the uh, Discovery bottom plate. This side is the front of the quad and if you look at the NASA you'll notice that we want our motor ports M1 through M4 pointed at the front of the quad. So we'll go ahead and, and in, in my case I normally use a little bit of 3M adhesive with Velcro. Um, you can use, it, it provides a little bit of vibration damping which uh, works well and then you could get some double sided foam sticky tape if that works for you. And you'll notice on the bottom plate that there are white lines for uh, your NASA placement. So next we'll go ahead, I've gone ahead and soldered the uh, NASA VU 
to the board, the bottom plate, and you'll notice in a couple different areas there are actually uh, power connections here, here, and here. So I placed the uh, VU here just because it was convenient for my setup. Now I'll go ahead and connect the VU, the horizontal LED port, the four pin connector, and then the three pin connector will connect to the X3 port. And just a quick test to make sure everything is soldered and connected properly, we'll just give a little power to the board. We can see that the VU is lit up. So I've gone ahead and connected just the receiver inputs. They're loose right now. We'll connect those in a little bit. And then uh, the motor, the ESC connectors, which power the motors. And those, keep in mind that the, the, uh, this is the front of the Discovery or our quad. And so this is M1, M2 over here. M3 and M4, it's kind of numbered uh, counterclockwise. So that's just always a good thing to keep in mind um, when doing the configuration. To mount our top plate, I've gone ahead and put our red uh, posts in place and we'll tighten those up in a little bit. You can, if you choose uh, to, to use Loctite, you can use, lock these guys in. Um, I generally don't, just personal preference, I normally do just kind of a pre-flight check um, all my connections and, and bolts. So uh, one other thing I want to point out is our uh, video transmitter, if we had the TBS core, we could actually make use of, of these different connections for our uh, FPV camera and our video transmitter. But in the case of this, the Hobby King 5.8 uh, gigahertz transmitter, I'm just going to uh, run a separate battery for the time being. We could clip these leads and use one of these power um, distribution uh, solder connections on the board, but for the time being, I'd, I'll run a separate battery instead of powering off the uh, standard flight battery. I've gone ahead and mounted uh, the different channels, channel inputs into the NASA to the top plate of the uh, discovery frame. And we'll go ahead and assemble the top plate. So put the top place, plate in place. I haven't fully tightened everything, just keep it a little bit loose. I've uh, put the F450 arms in place and going to mount them and then tighten everything up. Now remember, it's a good idea to keep all your cables uh, centered you know, underneath each arm just so that you don't have loose cables running anywhere. But I have to say this, this build looks pretty awesome, this discovery frame and the layout of the arms. Um, is really clean looking. Our transmitter is now mounted. I uh, went ahead and put it top center just because that's the easiest location for the time being. The Hobby King uh, transmitter is rather long, so it's, you know, I've seen some people mount it to the side arms, but it's not going to be easy with this transmitter. One other thing I'd like to point out is I'm using a kitchen sponge just as a temp temporary vibration damping technique. Uh, when you do order the Discovery, if Team Black Sheep has the uh, vibration damping foam in stock, they'll ship it to you, but in my case, I didn't receive it, so this is just a uh, temporary solution. So I've done a few things in this step that I'd like to point out. I've gone ahead and zip-tied my ESCs in place. Now, I haven't fully zip-tied them because, as you probably already know, um, it's important that we get the motor uh, prop directions correct now. This is prop one, or motor one, so we want this to be in a counterclockwise position. Prop two, clockwise. Prop three, counterclockwise. And prop four, clockwise. Now, you can't always get this right on the first try, so it's always good to, you know, connect your receiver, bind it to your transmitter, and give it a little bit of um, throttle just so you can determine you know, which way the motors are spinning. And if they're not spinning correctly, obviously you need to switch uh, two of these three uh, connections from the ESC to the motor. So that's why I haven't fully 
zip tied everything in place just so I can get that right. You'll also notice that I've mounted the GoPro and connected it to the uh, video transmitter and the GoPro actually mounts with rubber bands. You'll, you'll notice a tab on the top plate and a tab on the bottom plate that you can use. I went ahead and put two rubber bands just to be safe. also have some uh, foam underneath the GoPro just for any vibration damping. Now one thing I'm concerned about and this will just come through experimentation is how the GoPro butts up against this top plate so that could create some vibration but um, I'll know more after doing some flight testing. Now I have the receiver mounted. You'll notice we have channels 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 connected to pins 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that we soldered earlier. And those actually, if you look at the top plate, there are traces that come over here to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, all the way through 8. And those actually, these channels are routed to the aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder inputs on the NASA. And channel 5 is actually uh, routed to the U port. And that's where we'll, that's what we use to configure uh, the flight modes. And if you've if you haven't seen it, watch a video of mine that shows how to use uh, your control mode switch to switch between both uh, attitude mode and manual mode on the NASA. So the TBS discovery build is pretty much complete. As I mentioned earlier, I'll go ahead and confirm that my prop directions are okay. And then we'll connect it, the NASA up to the uh, NASA assistant software calibrate everything and then we'll take the uh, TBS Discovery out for its maiden flight. So this is our final step before we take the TBS Discovery for a test flight. Uh, I won't bore you with all the details of the NASA Assistant. If you've uh, watched some of my previous videos, I've gone into pretty extensive detail with the various sections, but the main thing that we want to uh, cover is the make sure that we're in the quad rotor X configuration and then our transmitter um, calibration. So we'll go ahead and click start and then we'll just move our sticks all around in every direction. Click finish and you can see that we're pretty close the throttles all the way down and rudder, elevator, and aileron are pretty close to the middle, so I'll trim those out. So let's go ahead and get our channel centered. We'll start with rudder. We want to get the little dial green. Then we'll work on elevator. It's green. Okay, our aileron is now green. So we should be good to go. We'll go ahead and write these settings. And those are saved. So the final thing I normally do before I take a new setup uh, for a flight is I get its current weight just so I can understand how the weight impacts different, you know, corresponds with different battery sizes and uh, get an understanding of flight time and so on. So if we see that, looks like we're at right at 2.98 pounds. So let's give it a go. Here we are with the TBS Discovery Maiden Flight, the GoPro uh, 720p mode in wide, wide format. You'll notice a, a little bit of jello, um, but keep in mind that there was 8 to 10 mile an hour wind, so the nozzle was working hard to stabilize the quad. And if you remember from the build video, uh, I didn't use the, you know, best foam for vibration damping. I used some um, a kitchen sponge and then some cutouts from insoles. So that there's definitely a lot of room for improvement there. And you'll also notice you can see the props barely in view. There's some, probably some easy tweaks that can be made uh, to get those completely out of view, which would really you know improve the quality of the video. So I'm looking forward to doing some FPV videos. I hope, you know, this this took quite a bit of time to put together, but I was hope, hope it was useful for you. The um, frame is really a pretty uh, solid piece of work, so I highly recommend it. And if you have any questions or comments about the build, 
feel free feel free to post and I'll be glad to follow up. Thanks for watching.